Many of our shows have featured large American mining operations that use core safety as their safety and health management system. But this month, I have a different story for you. We're going to take a look at a smaller company that's been developing a mining project over the last decade or so. The location is in northeastern Minnesota, and it's called the Twin Metals Minnesota Project. It started in 2010 as a joint venture between Duluth Metals and Antofagasta Minerals in Chile. In December 2019, after years of work and preparation, they finally submitted their mine plan of operation to regulators for the federal and state review processes. And that's where things are now. My interview this month is with their Director of Operations and Safety, Dean DeBelts. He's going to tell us about their safety culture and how Twin Metals Minnesota decided to start using core safety right now. In 2011, we built our headquarters, which I'm standing in today. So 2011 through 2013, basically, was the exploration phase where we really understood the geologic deposit. And so the deposit that we're looking at is actually one of the world's largest undeveloped deposits containing critical minerals in our area. Copper, nickel, uh, cobalt, and platinum group metals. So in 2013, we constructed our core storage facility, which houses about 1.5 million feet of core, which really defines the deposit where we anticipate developing an underground precious metals mine. Currently, we have submitted our formal mine plan of operations to the agencies, both the federal and state agencies to review our project. And, and that really kicked off the environmental review process for our, our project. We, we operate on Forest Service managed land, state managed surface, and then Bureau of Land Management minerals for the most part. There's state minerals, there's private minerals. It's really a patchwork of, of minerals within our deposit. So most of the work that we do from a drilling perspective, you know, we hire contractors to do that work. We hire a lot of consultants uh, to do our environmental studies in the field. So really our uh, responsibility is to make sure that our contractors, our consultants really understand the, the regulations that, you know, are in front of us and we get them to the right places and make sure that, you know, we can meet any requirements that we need to help support the project to move forward. Back in 2012, when I was hired, I was hired as a safety manager, which, you know, for a project, if you will, really impressed me with the focus on safety. Coming into this project, I realized that, you know, we had a lot of contractors. There were a lot of minor injuries associated with the, you know, the, the field work that was ongoing at the time. Drilling, for example, we had 11 drill rigs that were running uh, 24 hours a day. And we, and we as a company were seeing our, our contractors having some, some minor uh, injuries associated with their work. Fast forward a little bit and, you know, the conversation at the time was, you know, we have to do something to change. We can't develop a culture without safety involved in that. And really, you know, that kicked off our introduction to core safety. Pre-pandemic, our CEO, our chief regulatory officer, and myself were in, in Washington, D.C., and we, we actually visited the National Mining Association headquarters, and we sat down with Tom Harmon and discussed our involvement and our progress in core safety, you know, to ensure that we were still, you know, on target or on track for you know, maintaining our core safety status. So that was really important and it was a really good conversation to 
to you know provide an update with the modules that we have developed. At Right Away, from a risk perspective, we really wanted to engage Tom Hetman from the University of Utah to help take a look at what we had, because prior to that time, we, we didn't have a safety system. You know, we had a safety framework, if we, you will. We had a safety policy. We had some standard operating procedures to help us with our work, but we really didn't have a safety system in place to help support the work that we do out there. And we kind of laid out a timeline for, you know, how we develop our safety and health management system uh, moving forward. Really, the key to that was the Core Safety Plan Do Check Act concept associated with that. And, and we took a look at what items did we really need to focus on? How could we eliminate any injuries or any potential injuries that were happening? What did we need to institute or what, did, what systems did we have to put in place uh, to help support that? You know, then it's, then it's the, the work of making sure we're out in the field and, and we're looking after our contractors. You know, we're looking at conditions they're faced with. We're looking at procedures that they have in place. And we're also looking at individual behaviors to help support that. And again, coming back to that, then we have to make sure that if there's anything that's lacking or anything that needs improvement, we act on that, issue corrective actions, and then the follow-up is re really what the training, and then it's a constant do-loop cycle, if you will, to make sure that we're following through on that. And really, that's the leadership aspect of core safety as I see it. You know, we're still under OSHA right now, but we follow a lot of the MSHA regulations to make sure that that is an easy transition when we get to that point. But, you know, we haven't had a, a, a recordable, reportable injury since 2014. We set up a contractor evaluation form that really, it's, it's the closest thing that I, I, I would consider we would have as a crystal ball into how our, our contractors are going to act in the field. So we evaluated, do they have safety systems in place? What are their frequency rates? You know, what's their experience? And from that, we, we could determine really what type of risk are we undertaking with this contractor? We sit down and we discuss those risks, those hazards, things that are associated with their work. They go out in the field, you know, we're with them. We, we help manage their setup, manage their process. And then quite frankly, what we do, and this was instituted really by our, our parent company, Anapagasta Minerals, is we follow up with field verification tours. And that's really our leadership getting out there to take a look at, you know, again, conditions, procedures, and behaviors. We've built a safety culture among all 20 of us that work here, mm -hmm. among all of our, our contractors and consultants that work here. Everyone knows it's, it's a personal expectation when they come to work. Everyone's a champion of safety at, at our operation. We, everyone is uh, responsible for the programs that, you know, they manage out in the field. And they are really the safety professionals or safety champions for those, those projects. So again, part of our culture and important to us as a whole. If you're interested in knowing more about Twin Metals Minnesota, I encourage you to visit their excellent website at twin-metals.com. Lots of great information there, including updates on the current review process that's going on. And if you're involved with a smaller, younger mining operation like theirs that needs to really develop a solid safety culture, be sure to check out coresafety.org. And you can also email Dean DeBelts. His email address is on the screen behind me. Now, up next, it's time for a new video nugget, Core Safety's module number 13, Occupational Health. Check this out. Occupational health should be treated on par with worker safety. The only difference between a worker injured on the job and one who is impaired from an occupational disease is that one occurs very rapidly, while the other occurs over a period of many years. 
Here's how we can treat health on par with safety. By anticipating, recognizing, evaluating, and controlling occupational health hazards leading to illness. And by applying appropriate new technologies with an emphasis on exposure assessment and medical surveillance. Companies should conduct periodic exposure assessment when employees face potential overexposure to hazards such as noise, dust, welding fumes, radiation, chemicals, etc. Also, whenever a professional industrial hygienist decides that it's appropriate. An exposure assessment program includes two factors compliance with regulatory requirements for exposure monitoring and determinations on the need for exposure controls and follow-up medical monitoring to guard against lasting effects from any exposures. Exposure assessment should follow validated sampling methodologies and accepted industrial hygiene practices. New technology such as continuous personal dust monitors CPDM should be used to serve as a way to modify employee behavior relative to exposure to airborne contaminants. Your mining operation should also provide wellness education for employees, including mechanisms that can be used to improve general health risk factors both on and off the job. Occupational health management data should be documented for compliance, analysis, and verification purposes and for future reference. You can learn more about module number 13 by going to our website at coresafety.org. And in June, we'll continue with core safety module number 14, incident reporting and investigation. Until then, please be sure to follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter. For Core Safety and the National Mining Association, I'm Nelson Duffel. I'll see you here again next month. In the meantime, though, please be safe out there, and thanks for watching. Special thanks to Twin Metals Minnesota and to Dean DeBelts for this month's interview on using Core Safety at any size mining operation. To share one of your safety stories, videos, or photos, email us at info at coresafetytv.org.